Hello, once again, guys. Ivan Paddy here. Uh, welcome to another tutorial on Peak Assembly Language Programming. Now, on this video, we are going to look at lookup tables. We are going to look at how we make use of lookup tables. And let's get started right away. Let's consider this example here that says draw the flowchart and write an assembly program to read port A0 to A2 and display the value on a seven segment using lookup table. Basically, we have a three bit binary value we are supposed to read and display the decimal value corresponding to that binary on a seven segment so it's a binary to decimal converter display on the seven segment right we need to do that using the lookup table it further says use the internal oscillator it means now on our circuit we don't need an external circuitry for the oscillator we are going to use the internal oscillator now let's have a look at how the schematic for this will look like for this example, I'm also using, or I'm still using the PIC 16F818 microcontroller. And now you have your A0 and A2. A0, A1, and A2, your three inputs connected with pull up configuration. You have a switch to ground. Those are our three inputs. We have the MTA connected to VCC through a 10K resistor. Your VDD and VSS of your PIC are connected to 5 volts and ground respectively. And we have our 7 segment connect, connected to port B. I've chosen to use B1 up to B7 to connect from A up to G of our 7 segment. You can choose alternatively. You can choose B0 to B6 maybe for A up to G. Now, in this case, I've connected A of the 7 segment to B1, B of the 7 segment to B2, C of the 7 segment to B3. This is on, this is port B basically. Now D of the 7 segment to B4, E to B5, F to B6, and G to B7 on your peak microcontroller. So we are using a common cathode uh, 7 segment, the common lead of the 7 segment is connected to ground now to switch any led of your seven segment your io must be um sent to logic one must be connected high so that current can flow from the output of that io pin through the resistor through the led to ground and then that led will switch on will glow right to switch off that led you clear your output Clearing your output switches off the LED. Setting your output switches on the LED. Right. If you are using a common unknown seven segment, the common won't be ground. It will have to be VCC. Right. And now to switch on your LED, the output must be set to low. If the if the I/O pin is set to low and your common is VCC and this seven segment is a common a note switching your output low switches on the, the, the led setting your output high switches off the led that's for common a note but here we will be using a common cathode seven segment so switching your logic high on the output you are switching on the led low on the output you are switching off the led for this configuration common cathode configuration so basically that's our circuit Right. How how are we supposed to display zero on a seven segment? For an example, to display zero on a seven segment, we just have to switch off segment G. If we switch off G and the rest of those seven segments are on, that will display zero. Right. Now G is connected to what? G is connected to B7. You take B7 low and B1 up to B6, you take them high, that will display 0 on your 7 segment. Let's look at how you'll display 0 up to 7 now. 
uh, with that configuration um, this is what we need to do to display zero on our seven segment connected to port b and then specifically a connected to b1 b connected to b2 c b3 d b4 e b5 f b6 g b7 b0 is not connected to anything so the whole of bit b0 bits I'm, I'm always going to make them zeros right now to display a zero only g must be off to display a zero on your seven segment only g must be off the rest from a up to f a up to f the rest must be on so for common cathode on is when you send logic one i'm using a common cathode so i'm going to send logic one to all of them except g that will display zero on a seven segment what is the value that i must send to port b now as a hexadecimal value zero one 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 that's a seven and then one 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 zero that's e sending seven e to port b will display zero on your seven segment right to display one b and c must be on the rest must be off so b must be on c must be on to display one b must be on c must be on the rest should be off what is the value zero 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 that's a zero one one zero zero that's a c so sending zero c to port b will display one on your seven segment for two f and c must be off so to display two f is off and then c is off and then a up to g must be on except that f and c so the value we get there it's one zero one one which is a b and then zero one one zero which is a six so sending b six to port b will display two on your seven segment you can get the rest of the values for three four five six and seven looking at the picture there that displays a value and how you configure your a up to g to display that and then the value you get you convert it to hexadecimal and then when you send this value to port b is going to display the corresponding digit on your seven segment now the, these values are going to be very important and these values are the values that we're going to use in the lookup table meaning in the lookup table when we want to display zero we're going to fetch this value in the lookup table when we want to display one we're going to fetch this value in the lookup table when we want to display seven we're going to fetch that value so we're going to show you how we use a lookup table to fetch um, the values let's get back to the problem the problem says draw the flowchart and write an assembly program to read port a0 to a2 and display the value on the seven segment using lookup table right now let's start by drawing the flowchart where we want to configure a0 to a2 as our inputs because we need to read them a0 to a2 as our inputs and then outputs on port b because the seven segment is connected to port b and we will also want to disable analogs so that we can use those pins as digital pins so let's know let's go create a flowchart we go to draw.io want to draw our flowchart let's create a flowchart and then under documents there let's create a folder where we will save this flowchart new folder i'll call this folder look up and now i give my a file a name flowchart and then save a window appears there where we can draw our flowchart our flowchart always starts with an oval shape start and then the first thing we go to is initialize now at initialize 
we want to set up our IO pins RA0 up to RA2S inputs we want to disable analogs and we want port B to be outputs those are the basic things we want to do at initialize now after that what we want to do is we want to read a0 up to a2 use the lookup table to fetch the value and then display on the seven segment by writing to port b so the first thing we do is we now have to read our inputs our a0 to a2 now because we're only interested on A0 to A2, we don't have an instruction or a way to read specifically only A0 to A2. We have to read the whole of port A. Right. So we're going to read port A. But remember, when we read the whole of port A, we're also reading other bits we are not interested in. A3, A4, A5, up to A7. We are reading them. But we are not interested in those. So we need to force the ones that we are interested we are not interested in we need to force them to be zeros so how do we do that we end with a value 0x 0, 0 7 hexadecimal 7 why are we ending with 7 let me just explain a little bit um we are going to end with a binary value or a, yeah if, if it's in the binary then it's going to be zero 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 one 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 that's a seven now why are we ending with zero seven specifically when we end a value with or when we read port a and then we end with seven what are we doing Whenever you end anything with a zero, what do you get? The end operation. Whenever you end anything with a zero, what do you get? So what are we going to get? We're going to get a binary value. When we end anything with a zero, we get a zero. When we end with zero, we get a zero. And then we end with a zero, we get a zero. We end with a zero, we get a zero. We end with a zero, we get a zero. You end with one, what do you get? If you end with one, if the input was one, it's going to remain one. If the input was zero, it's going to remain zero. Right, so if you end with one, whatever you are ending with one, it remains unchanged. So I'm going to use U for that. Unchanged, that is A2 is going to remain unchanged. A1 is going to remain unchanged. A0 is going to remain unchanged. But the rest of the other bits are going to be zeros. So we are ending with this 0, 7 to ensure that we have A0, A1, and A2 unchanged. But the rest of the other bits, we force them to be zeros. Right. That's the reason we are doing that. And this step or this process is called masking. We are actually masking our bits. Ensuring that they don't exceed or the they conform to, to a certain rule we wish. So mask by ending with 07. We are masking our bits by ending with 07 after we read port A. Right. Now, after doing that, then we can use the value we read and ended with 07 we can use it to fetch the value from the lookup table now the value that we're going to fetch on the lookup table will be a value which when we take that value and put it on port b it will display a number relating to the state of the input it will display on the seven segment a number relating to the state of the input we read on port a so we need to go and fetch that value. Fetch value from 
look up table. Go fetch a value from look up table. Which value are we going to fetch? We are going to fetch any of these values. We are going to fetch this value, this value, this value, or that value, depending on what is it that we read on port A when we read port A. Right. Go and fetch that value. Right. Now, after fetching that value, we want to write to a seven segment using that value. So to display on a seven segment, we just put that value on port B. Write that value to port B. Writing that value to port B will actually display that number on a seven segment. And then after writing to the seven segment, we want to keep on reading the state of the input, ensuring that only three uh, uh, required bits are the ones useful, the rest are zeros. We call the lookup table to fetch the value which will display the number on the seven segment. Right. Now, let me just add arrows on our flowchart. And then when we get here, we want to repeat the reading process. And now this is going to be where our main is. Right. So this is our flowchart. This is our flowchart. Now, let's go and now write a program. Let's go now and write a program because this draw the flowchart, the render assembly program to read port A0 to A2 and display on the seven segment using lookup table. Let's go create a project where we want now to start writing a program that will implement what we have in our flowchart. I'm, I'm still going to use the old version of MPLAB for this tutorial. And then to create a project, go to project, select project wizard, next, select the device you wish to use for this project. In my case, 16F818 is selected, click next. We are going, we are using assembly language in these tutorials. So our tool suit should be MPASM assembler, next. Now I need to browse and create a project. So I'm going to browse. And then go to look up under documents, that folder where I saved my flowchart. That's where I'm going to save my project as well. And then give it a name, look up. And then click save. That's the location of my project. That's the name of my project. Click next. Nothing to add here. Click next. I don't want to add anything still here. Or this is actually the summary of your project. You just click finish. That's your project created. We now need to associate or to add a source file to the project. Shortcut new file or you can go to file and then say new. A new window pops up. You want to save this file. File, save as under the very same folder. Documents, look up. I'm saving my ASM file as look up dot asm and then add it to my project right and then click save this is where i'm going to write my program start by writing the basics informing the compiler which microcontroller are you writing this program for List P equals to 16F818. Here, I'm saying to the compiler that we are using P16F818. Now, make use of the file or include in your program the file P16F818.inc. Now, this file contains the definitions of all special function register names for their addresses and then all the bits of those special function registers. They are all defined in this file. So we are including this file in this program 
so that we can refer to the names without having to uh, define them first because they are already defined in that file so we are saying include this file in the pro program or project or we can say import this as a file or as a you can regard it as a library but import the file or import the library and then our program always has to end with end now that end is not for a pick to execute that end is to inform the compiler that this is the end of the program right that's the end of the program right now with this basic instructions there if i build this and select absolute option there it should build successfully i haven't started writing the program just created a project and placed in that asm file the basic things you need to get started with your program now the program will be written in the middle there before the end there's no way you can write the program after the end because you are saying to the compiler this is the end of the program the program must come in here now start is our reset vector we say we are going to start here this is our reset vector this is origin zero zero and then from origin zero zero we want to go to initialize so we go and do that origin zero zero which is our reset vector We want to go to initialize. Go to initialize. Right. And now initialize is a label. So I'm going to copy that label. And then I'm going to have my initialize there at the margin. The labels at the margin. Now, what is that I want to do at initialize? I want to go and set up my IO pins. And then I do that in bank one. So I need to switch to bank one. Bit set file status comma rp0 this takes me to bank one now now that i'm in bank one i want to make a0 a1 up to a2 inputs so i'm saying move a little bit into the bank for now i'm going to do this value in binary binary value bit 7 or oh, RA7 must be an output because I'm not using it as an input. All the pins I'm not using as inputs, I'm configuring them as outputs. So B7, B6, B5, B4, B3. B2 is an input, B1 is an input, B0 is an input. That's the binary value which I need to move to Tris A. Move W to 5. Tris A. That will configure my pins. R A zero two R A two S inputs right R A zero to R A two S inputs. Now on port B, I don't have any inputs. I can make the whole of port B outputs by clearing this B. Right. Make port B outputs all port b pins outputs right i still have to disable analogs as it is stated they disable analogs because port a 0 to a4 they are on default input analog pins so if you use those pins as inputs you need to disable analogs so i'm going to disable analogs by moving a value 0 6 into a d corner I did explain where that number 06 comes from and moving 06 into AD column 1, what it means. Basically, it means disable analogs. Now, because I'm using hexadecimal all um, for my code, I want to change this binary to this one. It is still correct there, there's nothing wrong. But I prefer using hexadecimal when writing the program. So I want to change that binary to hexadecimal. I only did binary to show you where the value comes from. So what is this value in hexadecimal? 00 
zero. That's a zero in hex, and then that's a seven. So the value that I'm moving into is eight zero seven. So I'm going to write now in hexadecimal that value is going to be zero x zero seven. Move it into this a right now after setting my inputs my outputs and disabling analogs what i need to do next is to read port a at main there i'm going to start off by reading port a but now for me to read port a i must first be in bank zero right so i'm going to switch to bank zero btfi status rp0 this takes me to bank 0 and then what i do now is beginning at main i need to read port a i need to read port a mask it by ending with 07 and then use the lookup table so let me start off by reading port a move file Port A into W. Here, yeah, basically, I'm reading port A. Reading port A includes reading A0, A1, and A2. Because those are the values or those are the inputs I'm interested in. And because I'm only interested in those three, I'm going to make sure that the rest of the other bits I'm not interested in, I make them zeros by ending whatever I read there. I end it with 07. This ensures that A3, A4, A5, A6, and A7 will be forced to be zeros. Only A0 to A2 will stay unaffected. They will remain unchanged. Now, with only those three I'm interested in, I want to now go and fetch a value from the lookup table. After masking, ending with 07, I want to go fetch the value on a lookup table and then after fetching that value moving that value to port b will display on the seven second first i need to fetch that value so how do we fetch that value then? we call lookup i'm going to call a label called lookup there i'm going to explain and when i write what lookup is so call lookup we are just jumping to look up to fetch a value and then we have to return. Whenever you call, you have to return, right? So I'm calling look up. I'm going to jump to wherever look up is and then fetch a value, return with that value. That value, when I return with it, I need to write it to port B. Move that value. That value, when I return, it will be in W. Right? I will return with that value in W and then just moving that W into port B meaning I'm writing the value I returned with to port B, this will be displaying on my 7 second. Display on 7 second. Here I'm fetching. By calling lookup, here I'm fetching the value to display on a 7 segment. This one is masking. I am masking by ending with 07. Now, after displaying on my 7 segment, after writing to port B, it says here, after writing to port B, where do I do? Go back to me. Keep on repeating the process. Right. So, what happens is now, we have go to May. This process will keep on repeating. Right. Read port A. Ensure that the unused bits are zeros. Fetch a value to display on a, on a, on a hexadecimal. Or a value to display on a 7 segment. What the binary value on port A represents. And then after fetching that value, display it on the 7 segment by writing to port B. Repeat the process. Let's look at this lookup. So this lookup, I'm going to put it here. You can put it under go to main there if you want. It will still work, but I'm going to put it here. I'm putting it here because, I mean, 
at origin zero zero after initial after power on this program is going to jump to initialize it's going to come directly to initialize it's going to skip whatever you have here so it's not a problem if i put my look up here and i have another reason why i'm putting it here maybe i'll explain that reason later on but even if you put it down there it will still work right so on your lookup table the first instruction that must be on your lookup table is add w with file and then the file is pcl comma file your lookup table always has to have the first instruction as add w to file pcl comma file that has to always be the case now the first one is if we want to display zero we are going to fetch the first value here return because we call the lookup table whenever you call you have to return there are two returns which we can use a normal return which is written like that but now this return it returns without fetching anything we want to return by fetching a value so what we do is we use return with a value into w so this instruction it's still a return instruction but before it returns it loads a value into w which value do we want to load into w the first value here will be the value that's supposed to display zero on your seven second this is the value we want to return with now what's the value that's going to, dis to display zero on your seven second the value that's going to display zero on your seven segment is seven e because when we take this 7e we move it to port b is going to display zero on your seven second so we need to return with this value into w hence we did the whole thing so that we can get these values right now the first one we say let's return with ox 7e now this is a value that's going to display it's a value that's going to display zero on your seven segment this value is for displaying zero on your seven segment right the first value is for display zero on your seven segment the second value will be for displaying one so we have to get now the value that's going to display one the value that's going to display one according to this it is zero c so we write now on this one zero c and then we need another one for two three four five six seven right so but now we need to change these two three four five six and seven and then we have to change those as well so let's do for the first three and for the last three two three four for two three four what are the values b6 9e cc b6 9e cc so we're going to do b6 9e cc sorry b6 9e cc right and now the next thing that we want to do is look for the lower ones. D A F A zero E. D A F A zero E. D A F A zero E. Right. So basically, that's that's our lookup team. Now, when we call lookup table, it's going to jump to this and says add w to file pcl, and now 
if we had zero, we are going to add zero to PCL. And then if we add zero to PCL, we are going to return with this number. Now, if W had one, meaning we want to display one, we are going to say one add with PCL, we are going to return with this number. But now, how is that achieved? How is that achieved? That goes back to what we call a pipelining, instruction pipelining. What instruction pipelining means? Let's look at this. Now, the peak microcontroller does what we call instruction pipelining. At the beginning, remember now, your program, once, once you program your microcontroller, these instructions will be saved into the program memory. Right. Your CPU has to fetch those instructions and execute them. Right. So what it says is at the beginning, you're going to, the first instruction cycle, you're going to fetch the first instruction there. And now on the next cycle, when that instruction, because it was fetched on the first cycle, when that instruction it is being executed, the next one is automatically being fetched. So fetching and execution of instruction, they happen during one instruction cycle. So when the CPU executes this instruction, the program counter fetches the next instruction that is going to be executed. So the program counter, that's our PCN. The program counter is a register that points to the address of the next instruction that's supposed to be executed. So when, we, when the CPU is executing this instruction, the program counter has this address in it. Meaning when this one is being executed, when execution is happening here, PCL has the address, the next address. Now, the next instruction cycle, when we execute this one, which was fetched, PCL already has the next one, right? So that's basically what we call instruction pipelining. And that, that's the trick that the lookup table is using. Now, with this instruction pipeline, let's look at it here. Let's assume that we read port A, right? And now port A was zero. We ended with seven, it's still zero, we call lookup. So the term we call lookup, because we read port A and saved it into W, W has zero in it. We call lookup. Now, at lookup, we say add W with PCN. When the CPU executes this add, PCL has the address of the next instruction, meaning PCL has the value of the address here. Let me build this and demonstrate what I mean by address. This assembly list. Now, this is the code which we have written. And now, at add there, this is program memory address 1. When we execute instruction add at program memory address 1, PCL has program memory address 2 relating to the instruction, which is this next one. When you execute the add W to file PCL, PCL has the next instruction there, which is, has the address of the next instruction, which is 2. So if we had 0 into W, we add 0 with 2, the next instruction is still at 2 because we say that 2 save into PCL. So PCL still remains 2, meaning the next instruction it is still 2 because PCL holds the address of the next instruction. So we are going to return at 1, at 2, at address 2. This address 2. Now we return with 0, uh, uh, 7e because we added 0 to PCL. And then when we return with 7e, moving that 7e to port B, display 0 on a 7 segment. We go back to main. If we read port A again, let's assume now port A has 1 in it. So we read port A, we end with 7, it is still 1. When we call lookup, we have 1 in W. When we say add W to 5, PCL, 1, W has 1, PCL has the, next, the address of the next instruction. The address of the next instruction will always be this next one. When you execute this one, this is the next instruction. PCL has address 2. Right. When we execute the add, the address of this is 2. But now we have 1 in W. We see, say, 1 plus 2 
becomes three. Save that in PCL. PCL becomes three. Right. And now remember, PCL is purpose is to hold the address of the next instruction. Now, if PCL has three, what is the next instruction? The next instruction is at three. So at three, where are we? It is here. So instead of returning with 7e, we are now going to return at 3, returning with 0c. Why? Because of that one. That one offset changes the PCL to go one instruction extra. Right. So if we had 2, that 2 offset would have skipped the 2 come here for 2. If we had 3 in W, it's going to offset up to 3 retaining here. So that's the idea of lookup table we modify in pcl because pcl holds the address of the next instruction by adding one we are going to skip one and then return there if we add zero it is still going to return on the next instruction right but if we add one it's going to return on just one under that one if we add two and so on and so on so our lookup table can be as long as we want but for our case our lookup table is up to 7, hence we had to end with 7 to ensure that the value which we use to add to PCL mustn't exceed 7 because the size of our lookup table is 7. Right. Now, that's basically what lookup tables are. That's the principle on what or on which lookup tables are based on. Right. So, being successful, let me simulate this and see if it's going to work which i believe it should right so that's my pick 16f818 if you don't have the seven segment shown on your assume uh, simulator software you just go to tools the seven segment option there tools seven segment led display panel it shows you four seven segments we are just interested in one so i'm just going to click setup there and now my A has to be connected to port B1. If we want to change that, just click that and say port B1. In my case, I have already configured it that way. A is connected to B1, B is connected to B2, C is connected to B3, D, B4, up until G is connected to B7. My seven segment is always enabled. Ensure that this is always enabled. You can click it by, or you can change it by clicking there right always enabled there that's what i want now um let me load my program under lookup that's my lookup hex and let me start simulation i have zero displayed on the seven segment eh? let me hide setup zero displayed on my seven segment because the three inputs a0 a1 and a2 are off that binary value it is zero now if i do this i make a01 my seven segment becomes one i make a02 in binary this is two it is displayed on a seven segment as a decimal two in binary that's a three it is displayed on a seven segment as a decimal three in binary that will be seven one 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 is a seven displayed on a seven segment as a decimal seven so basically that's what lookup tables are and that's how we make use of them right that's how we make use of them now let me give you a task now to say your job will be now to extend your lookup table to include 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F. Right. So these are the values that you need to put in on your lookup table to extend it. But also to do that, you have to change the program. You will have to change the program and say my inputs are no longer only three inputs but now there are four inputs meaning it's going to be a0 a1 a2 and a3 and to set those as inputs you will send 0f to this a and now you end with 
zero f here. You end with zero f, you call lookup table. Now the length of your lookup table will be from zero up to f. Your table has to expand as well. So you need to have values for eight, nine, a, small case b, c, small case d, e, and f. Right. So you get the values. You modify. Because these are, this is still going to display 0, 1, 2, 3 because I just copied there. You change this. Let me just quickly do it because I already have the values here. Now, FE, CE, EE, F8. FE, CE, EE, F8 are the first four. FE, CE, EE, F8. Go into my program. F E C E E E F eight. I think those are the correct ones. And then it's F E C E E E F eight. The the next four are. 72BCF2 E2. 72BCF2 E2. 72BCF2 E2. 72BCF2 E2. So now that's the new size of my lookup table using four bits input. Now this is A0 to A3 as my input. Seven segments still connected to port B. I just extended my lookup table and then a masking value there changed as well. Build this. Stop simulation. Let's load the updated hex file. And then let's start simulation. Now we have A0 up to A3 now. We have four inputs there. Remember, A5 can, can only be an input. But we're not using it. A5 we're not using it. Even if I do anything on it, nothing's going to change. We're using A0 to A4. If I do this, that's a 1. That's a 2. That's a 3. That's a 4. 5. 6. Seven. Now that's an eight. Nine. A. B. C. D. E. F. Right. So basically, that's what lookup table is about um, try and and do more examples on lookup tables uh, maybe as an example let's say now uh, you want to display um, still a2 still 4 bit but now you want to read a1 up to a4 you see now, A0 is no longer the least significant bit. Now we have one E to set up this as inputs. You cannot, if this is the case, you cannot read port A as it is because A0 will be the least significant bit. And then that will affect the length of your table. That will affect the length of your table. To get rid of that, you need to shift your bits to the right so that you get rid of A0 and you make A1 the least significant bit. So instead of just reading port A as it is, we're going to read it and shift it to the right by using the rotate right file. Rotate right file, port A, save into W, 
still once we have done that it means now we have made a0 the least significant this can still remain f and then the table can still remain that size right but if we didn't rotate we were supposed to change this to 1e and then maybe modify our table to fit the length of that 1e right let's build this and see how does changes our simulation file let's load the updated hex file simulation start you see now a0 is no longer an input a1 is the input but we can still write 0 1 3 up until f right we can still do that but what if okay let me just end here for this video. Other things, we will discuss them later. Now, the rotate right file, what I wanted to show you is what if we decided to say A2 is our first input and then we're using A5 there. It is still four inputs, but that is A2 to A5. This makes it 3C. Right. Now, for A2 to be the least significant bit, you have to shift twice to the right. You have to shift twice to the right. How do you? How are you supposed to do that? Because this instruction shifts only once. This instruction here shifts only once to the right. But if A2 is the bit you wish to make the least significant, you need to shift to the right two times before you can end with 0F. How will you do that? There's no way that you will do it this way. That will be wrong. If you do it this way, you say rotate right file, port A, and then you say port A. Or let's say you say port A, comma, file there, and then you say port A, comma, W. This, this, this will be wrong. It will be wrong because port A, when you read it, it's still going to read A0 in it. It's still going to read A0 and A1 still there in it, even if you rotate it once there. So this is not going to help. What you need to do is, you need to rotate right port A, save it into W. But now, we need to rotate for the second time, the value which we saved into W, we need to rotate it for the second time. We don't have an instruction that rotates W itself. This rotate, rotate right file, it has to be implemented against a file there. So whatever we rotated, we read and rotated on port A. We need to temporarily save it somewhere. So we need to make use of a temporary register. Now, temporary register, I'm giving it a name, and then I'm equating it to address in hexadecimal, and that is actually my temporary register. It is part of the general purpose registers. It's part of the general purpose registers, which we get on our peak microcontroller. If we look at this memory organization, we have general purpose registers. These registers are the registers we can use to save any information we want to see right these are special the names of special function registers these are the addresses said i said the include file specifies that port a it is address 5 port b it is address 6 but now these registers they don't have names because they are general purpose registers when we want to use them we can give them names so they start at 20 in hexadecimal up to 7f right so i'm saying the address at 20 let's give it a name temp the address at 20 let's give it a name temp given to a registered address 20 in hexadecimal and then that's where at in temp that's where i'm going to save my information i'm going to rotate right port a save into w then move w to file temp right so temp 
it's my general purpose register where i can save my information because it falls between that 20 and 7f of the hexadecimal so temp is a registered address 20 so i'm just adding here on this table temp here but temp is a register that i can use to save my information it doesn't control anything of the microcontrol special function registers are the ones that control and monitor the aspects of the microcontrol general purpose registers that's where you save your information you can move anything into a general purpose register nothing is going to happen you are just saving your information in there right so in this case address 20 in hexadecimal i'm using it as my temp and I'm, I'm equating that register to temp and then i'm saving the information i read from port a i'm saving it into w and then move it into temp temporarily right and now this value is the value which was rotated once but because i want to make a2 the least significant i need to rotate that twice so this time around i'm not going to rotate port a but i'm going to rotate temp temp is port a which was rotated once i want to rotate that port a for the second time so rotate right file temp save into w now whatever is in w it is port a rotated twice this time around and then after rotating port a twice i have a2 as my least significant bit i can end with 0f call the lookup and display the value on port b let's build that and then simulate it stop simulation load the new hex file start simulation you see now my inputs are a2 a3 a4 up to a5 currently the seven segment has zero in it when i do this seven segment has one when i do this eight if all of them are high that's f right but using a2 as the least significant bit i had to rotate it twice to the right to make this bit the least significant bit right okay guys that concludes our video on lookup tables and uh, ensure that you understand this tutorial you can make use of lookup tables in your applications as well typical applications of lookup tables uh, specifically on seven segments is let's say for example you want to implement a counter something that counts from zero to nine or you have two seven segments it has to count from uh, zero up to 99 in decimal and so on or you want to implement a um, real-time clock with four seven segments you can make use of lookup table to be able to display any value between zero and nine right because for a, a real-time clock you just need values between zero and nine a b c those are for hexadecimal purposes they are not really necessary for your real-time clock so Lookup tables find applications in a lot of situations and they help you minimize what could have been a very, very long program. Right. So ensure that you understand lookup tables. Be able to use lookup tables in your applications. Thank you guys. I'll see you on the next tutorial.